and many of you may know already, we have earned the support of the enough delegates to secure the Democratic <laughs> In the coming weeks, I will continue to work so very hard to do what we must do to unite our party on the path to uniting our country. Chairman Jamie Harrison, Congresswoman Susan Delbany, and Senator Gary Peters are all back with us. Chairman Harrison, a question for you. My friend Simone is, is, is wise to remind us that the Biden coalition was not the Obama coalition, and the Harris coalition will certainly be different than the Biden coalition. Can you talk to us uh, about the dynamics and the demographics of that group as you see it? What are the voters she needs to pull together in order to pull this over the finish line? I, I think that's right. You know, I believe what she will get is a blend of all of that. Again, we are seeing organizing in circles that we normally don't see for Democratic candidates. And, and that's the type of energy that, that Kamala Harris and her campaign is already bringing to uh, this campaign in a dynamic. We are seeing white women in particular. You know, white women, uh, we know that black women always turn out for the Democratic uh, uh, campaign at a strong uh, at, at, at the strongest numbers. We are seeing black men also galvanized and energized. And, you know, one of the things you always worry about, and you saw it in the 2016 race, was, you know, whether or not any of the misogynistic uh, aspects of life will creep into there. But what we are seeing with men, and particularly young men, is that they are galvanized by Kamala Harris. And so I, I think she is going to have the best of both worlds, bringing together both the Biden coalition and the Obama coalition to create her own uh, lane co and coalition of groups. And folks, uh, there is something special about this campaign. And uh, I, I can't wait to see where we go in November. You know, Senator Peters, as we were sitting here in the break, um, right before we came to back on, I said, God, God bless uh, Gary Peters, honey, but I just, I don't know about the Senate. And your your fellow chairs here were quick to remind me that if anybody could, could, could pull it out, it is you and the you all have the right candidates in these places, talking about Sherrod Brown in Ohio and John Tester in Montana. And now at the top of the ticket, um, that, that energy, that they are in a, in a, in a, in a good position. Just, just talk to me about, are there any places where you were more concerned than not, right? Because I do think that when the story is written and if Democrats do, in fact, hold and expand even seats in the Senate, that is some, somebody going to need to canonize you, sir, because <laughs> that's a feat. OK. Well, well, you know, I want to be fair. We're, we're, we're concerned about every race. You, you have mm -hmm. to be uh, constantly working uh, and just sticking to your plan, put the nose to the grindstone and do it. But clearly, uh, you mentioned uh, uh, Sherrod Brown in Ohio and John Tester in Montana. Those are really, really tough states, and, and we can't get to the majority without holding those states. So we are all in. We've got great candidates. Uh, our ground campaign is going to be finding those Democratic voters and those independent voters. And the, the enthusiasm we're seeing on the ground there as uh, well as around the country. You know, I was at a at a, uh, a canvas kickoff yesterday here in Michigan. The enthusiasm was great. Uh, there are a number of young folks there that had never volunteered on a campaign that that showed up. And in fact, uh, in in Michigan, uh, we had just in one week uh, we had double the number of volunteers sign up for our one campaign. And, and we're seeing that in all of these states. But they're going to definitely we have to be that focused in places like uh, Montana and Ohio. But we have pickups. We have Texas. We have Florida, which has already been mentioned. We've got great candidates there, and we're seeing them uh, uh, in the margin of error. These are candidates that are working very hard. They're going to need resources. But all of our states, certainly the battleground states, Wisconsin, uh, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, but we've got Arizona, Nevada, all of these states are going to be critical. And we need the resources to deploy those assets. That's why we have our website, defendthesenate.org. If folks go to defendthesenate.org, they can help us uh, make sure we're allocating money efficiently and, and making sure we win those races. And I'll just say, you know, with my other two chairs here, we, we talk regularly as well. We know we, ha we don't have unlimited amount of money, and we're trying to focus on those places that are going to be the most important to make sure that we win. It's a coordinated effort like we've never had before. I'm very, very excited.
Well, that, that's, the, that's the truth of any political uh, game plan is, you know, the, re the resources you have available to you to execute uh, the strategy, it, particularly in key spaces and places, uh, becomes very, very important. But there are what really pushes that process is the other side and the elements that they bring into the conversation. And I, I want to put on the table uh, for all three chairs, because I, I, I really would like to get a sense from you of, of how the House and the Senate races deal with what I'm about to bring up, and certainly the national chairman. You have um, Trump in Minnesota last night um, speaking about what Democrats do, and as part of the ongoing narrative that's the, the, I call it the setup, the punking of America when it comes to our elections. But let's listen to Mr. Trump uh, in Minnesota last night talking about what Democrats do. If they don't cheat, we win this state easily, okay? They cheat. They have no shame. They cheat. Do you understand that, you crooked people? They're the most crooked. <laughs> they cheat. They cheated in the last election. And they're going to cheat in this election, but we're going to get them. So I, I'll start with you, Congresswoman. Um, you've got House races. The House is there. But then you have this conversation with the country from a former president saying that your party cheats. If we, if we lose, it's because you cheated. If we lose, Senator, it's because you cheated. Chairman, if, if we lose, it's because you cheated. Congresswoman, I'll start with you. How, how do you address that with your members going into this battle this fall? I think the contrast couldn't be more clear this election. This is about our rights, our freedoms, our democracy, and our future. And we highlight that, first of all, because when we talk about our democracy and voting rights, and, um, you know, Donald Trump said that folks aren't going to have to vote again after this election, too. Mm -hmm. um, that tells you where they're at. So we need to make sure we're reminding folks what Republicans stand for, that they want to take away our rights and our freedoms. They want to undermine our democracy. And we're going to talk to them about what that means, Project 2025. Um, because when we talk to folks and we have that discussion with them, when we talk about candidates and we talk about the things that people care about, moving our country forward, addressing affordability, standing up for reproductive freedom, they absolutely are with us. So. They're going to do that. They have nothing else to say. So that's what they're going to say. We're going to be there every step of the way, talking about what's at stake mm -hmm. and talking about the issues that matter to people in terms of making a difference for our country, making a difference for families and moving us forward. Mm -hmm. Senator Peters. Senator. Well, uh, you know, it's, it's Donald Trump is basically a, a sore loser and, and he's going to lose uh, again and he's going to want to blame something else. But it is completely irresponsible. We know elections are free. They're fair. We saw that last time. No evidence whatsoever of widespread fraud, as uh, he alleged. It's simply a lie. Uh, we've got to remind the American people of that. And we have to let the American people know by just even questioning an election as to whether or not it's free or fair is a direct a direct attack on our democracy. If you attempt to delegitimize the very foundation of a democracy, which where people can go to the polls, have their voice heard, to make sure that the direction of the country goes the way that the majority of the American people want it to go, if you delegitimize that, you are attacking the core foundation of what has always made this country great. So we need to call Donald Trump out. We need to call out all those other candidates who just uh, repeat that lie for their own selfish interest and bring people together and be united. That's why Kamala Harris is a great candidate for the presidency, because she's about uniting folks. And when this country is united, we can accomplish anything. And this election, it shows that once again, this election is gonna be one of the most important elections we've ever been in. We've gotta win, and we've gotta win big. Chairman, we got a, a, just a few seconds left, but I'd really like you to get the last word on that. Listen, this guy is a chicken. He's scared to debate the, the pre, uh, vice president of the United States. He's the master of projection because he's projecting what they are actually doing. It is MAGA secretaries of states that are purging voters from the, the voting rolls. It's MAGA secretaries of state that are making it harder for people to vote in this country. And so he's going to lose in November like he lost in 2020. And I will send him a nice gift to say, I'm sorry. Sorry, Mr. Trump, uh, you're going back to Mar-a-Lago, but for good. Okay. I want to I see the brainstormed list of what that gift would be. A hundred days from Election Day. 
Fewer days until early voting begins. Jamie Harrison, Congresswoman Susan Del Bene, Senator Gary Peters, chairs of the DNC, DCCC, and the DSCC. Thank you all so much for getting us started.